So after defining the materials, now we have to tell ETFs the size of the beams and columns. So we have to tell ETFs what is the depth of the beam that we are using, what is its breadth and we have to also tell ETFs the size of the column and also of the slab. And we have to also tell ETFs what grade of concrete the beam is using and what grade of steel it is using. So for that, uh, so for that we have to go to again define. We know that for defining anything we have to go to define, right? So that is very simple. Okay. After that, go to section properties, and over here, beam and column come under the frame sections. So we'll first define beam and columns. Click on frame sections. And over here we click on add new property and section shape is concrete rectangular okay so it's concrete rectangular and the frequently used shape type is concrete and it's rectangular okay so the property name is beam the material that we are using is M20 and section shape is concrete rectangular so depth of the section is uh, let us use 350 mm deep beam and width is 230 mm so if you are just a beginner and you don't know how to get these values you can get these values using the preliminary design of beam and if you don't know how to do the preliminary design of beam there is a section at the end of this course you can refer to that section in order to understand various things that are required in order to carry out the design of a building Okay, so I have included this preliminary design in preliminary design of beam in that in that section. And once you become a professional, uh, you will eventually know the size of the beams. Okay, this is just a rough estimation. And if from the design results it comes that the size of the beam is much lower, you can increase them later also. Okay, so after giving the dimension, we have to also define the rebars. So for that, we'll click on modify so rebar. So here it's uh, M3 design only that is for the beam longitudinal bars will go with FE500 confinement bars that is the stirrups longitudinal bar means the bars that go along the length confinement bars are the stirrups so we click on FE500 so a cover to the longitudinal rebar group centroid so we'll use the cover of 25 mm or you can use the cover of 30 mm again 25 mm so reinforcement area overrides for ductile beams we will not provide any reinforcement override we will do the ductile detailing manually okay so we click on okay and again click on okay if you want to define beams or different sizes for different locations you can define other beams also for this course we will be using single kind of beam and from the design results if it comes that certain beams fail we will increase the size of those beams only after defining the beams we will also define the columns for that again go to add new property and click on concrete rectangular section and over here we'll name it as column so the material is m20 again and the section shape is concrete rectangular and the depth uh, and the width so uh, the depth that is depth of the column let us take as 350 mm width also let us take as 350 mm so it's a square column and the reinforcement modify so rebar the longitudinal bars will take fe 500 confinement bars again fe 500 so reinforcement configuration is rectangular confinement bars are the ties check design so we are designing the reinforcement so we'll check reinforcement to be designed so uh, this option over here the options for the longitudinal bars clear cover for confinement bars 40 mm is fine number of longitudinal bars along three direction phase so you can see that so this is written three this is two so uh, this phase is the two direction phase and this phase is the three direction phase okay along three direction phase so uh, these options you have to fill if you choose reinforcement to be checked okay this option reinforcement to be checked is used 
if you have got an already existing column of certain reinforcement and if you want to check whether or not that column will sustain some kind of load in that situation you use this option and over here you give the reinforcement that already exists in that column right now we are using a reinforcement to be designed so it as will not take any data from here you can just click on ok or if you want to you can fill these spaces so number of bars along three direction phase is three it's fine number of bars along two direction phase let's make it as three also so a uh, longitudinal bar size and area so corner bars will take as 16 mm and the okay so longitudinal bars uh, will take as 12 mm and the corner bar size will take as 16 mm and confinement bars that are the rings or you can say the lateral ties confinement bar size and the area so of 10 mm so uh, we are using the rebar of 10 mm for the confinement bars longitudinal spacing let's take as 100 mm and number of confinement bars in three direction phase is three and in two direction phase is also three we click on ok and after that we click on ok so after defining beam and column we can delete these already defined materials okay for that go to delete multiple properties from here select these things and click on delete selected frame sections also select these things so click here after that hold shift and click here all these will be selected and click on delete selected frame sections after that okay so let's delete this one also this one also and after that click on ok and again click on ok after defining beam and column now we will define the slab for that go to define again go to section properties and over here click on slab sections so we have already got defined materials we'll click on add new property so property name is slab so the thickness is 125 we'll name it as slab 125 material is m20 and modeling type is slab thin thick membrane or layer so slab thin means that it will take some kind of shear force slab thick means that it will take a lot of shear force for example the shear walls and membrane means that it won't take any shear force or the load acting on it so as we know that slab of 125 mm thickness take some load we'll go we'll go with slab thin option after that type is slab it's not a drop slab rib slab or the waffle slab it's a simple slab thickness is 125 mm so this value also comes from the preliminary design and if you don't know how to do it refer to the last section of this course after that click on ok so let us delete these two options and click on ok